All right, as I'm uploading this on YouTube, I have hidden the email address, which includes a student's name for privacy purposes. All right, so now let's look at the first question. Number one, round 5,763 to the nearest 10. And we're gonna look at the tens position, um, the place value. Six is in the, in the tens place. I will check the previous place value. The digit there is less than five. So we're gonna round um, down, as in we're gonna keep six as it is, and change the three to a zero, so that the, the place value of six remains the same. That's the answer, 5,760. So let's look at the next one, number two. Uh, 482 to the nearest 100. Uh, f is it going to be 400 or is it going to be 500? Well, let's check the hundreds place, which has a four. The previous digit is more than five. So once it's in the category of five or more, we're going to add one. So we add one to four, that becomes five. And of course, the eight and two will change to zeros. Why? Because we want to ensure that we are rounding um, the number should be close to the original. So that four becomes, as in 400 becomes 500. Okay, next one, let's look at it. Okay, this one is two decimal places. And so we have two we have four decimal places here. We only want two, which means we've got to chop these guys off. All right, but is it going to be 4.69? Well, when we check the next digit, the previous digit, all right, so we have nine here. The previous digit is actually five. And so once it's five or more, we have to add one to the nine. But remember, we're gonna chop these guys, chop these guys off. So 4.69 and adding a one to this nine here, what would, what, would that happen? what would happen here? So this would add a one there, which is really 0 0.01. So when you add one to the nine becomes 10, becomes seven, four, so we 4.7, the zero. Now we're rounding off to the nearest unit, as in the nearest ones. Okay, okay, so we have four here in the ones position. So we're looking at everything before, looking at the number before the decimal point. So we have to chop these guys off, basically, no decimal place. And so we check the very first decimal place here, which is the eighth. Um, with the eighth, it's in the category of five or more, so we add one to this and it becomes five. So the four in the ones position um, becomes five. We're still in the ones position as it is here. So we don't need the zeros as placeholders there. The 9.95 now, we want one decimal place. This number has two decimal places. We need to um, take off the last one, right? We need to remove that five. So it's gonna be 9.9. .9. Is it gonna be 9.9? .9? Or would we need to add a one, a, di a one as a digit to nine? Well, because the five is in the category of five or more, then we need to add one to the, the nine. I want to say one, I mean, it's going to be in the same place value as the, as the last nine there. So we're going to add, let's do that quickly. Add one to nine becomes 10. Carry the one, of course. One plus nine is 10, it becomes 10.0. And so that's correct. All right, the answer should be showing what? One decimal place. And when we approximate approximating correction, the answer should be close to the original value. So 10 is very close to 9.95. Think about money. $10 is close to $9.95. Okay, we're rounding to one decimal place again. We have 4.7 means that we want a, this number has two decimal places, yeah? So we need to take off the very last digit. So we'll have one decimal place. But we just don't want to chop it off just like that. All right, so we want to chop this guy off, in other words. But we want to keep in mind that, okay, so now we, we want one decimal place. This digit seven, are we going to add one to it to become eight, or are we going to leave it as it is? Well, check the previous digit here. And because it's less than five, we are going to round down. And round down simply means we're going to keep the seven as it is. So be 4.7, and that's correct. The number two falls into all of the following families except which group? All right, so the number two is an integer. Integers simply mean positive or negative um, numbers that, are, that, doesn't, that don't have a fractional part. 
So let's say we're coming from infinity, negative 9, negative 7, neg negative 8, negative 7, negative 3, negative 4, negative, you know, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and in the same sequence going on forever. So from positive infinity to negative infinity, or from negative infinity here to positive infinity, all right, we have no fractional parts. So we see the number 2 falls into that as an integer. Whole numbers, whole numbers start from what? The set of whole numbers start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 5, etc. Sometimes we, we use the term um, negative whole numbers when we describe in integers because we just want to say that we just want to say that we have no fractional part in for those numbers below zero like negative one there's no point in anything so we say you know negative whole numbers all right but whole numbers generally start from zero and then go one two three four etc natural numbers are the whole numbers excluding zero so natural numbers will not include zero but we start from one two three four and go on so they are really whole numbers excluding zero those are the natural numbers irrational numbers are any numbers um, that can be expressed as a ratio as an integer divided by an integer so if the number is irrational it cannot be expressed as an integer divided by an integer now remember we say 2 is an integer right so can 2 is 2 can 2 can 2 be expressed as a as an as an as a rational number first off as a rational number and you see the word the word ratio as a rational number of course 2 can be expressed as a ratio of 2 over 1 2 is a 2 is an integer and 1 is an integer this is till 2 so therefore if a number is rational it cannot be irrational irrational simple meaning cannot be expressed as a ratio so this answer is correct it says except which group Two falls into which category except which group? It doesn't fall into the category of irrational numbers, but rather rational numbers. And all these guys are rational numbers, by the way. They all can be expressed as a ratio of an integer divided by an integer. Which of the numbers in the following set are rational numbers? Uh, so let's pick out the ones that are aren't, right? Let's talk about rational numbers, right? can be expressed as a ratio as a over b where b cannot be equal to zero and a and b are members of the set of integers again negative and positive whole numbers including zero so which ones cannot be expressed as integer this guy here known as pi is an irrational number cannot be expressed as a fraction i know we approximate it to be 22 over 7 most times but it's definitely not 22 over 7 it's just a close representation of what pi is but it's, it's, we can't use the word you can't use an equal sign in between it because they're not equal pi is rational it cannot be expressed as a fraction and square root of 2 definitely cannot be expressed as a fraction as an integer over an integer if you use a calculator and you put square root of 2 to get a decimal you will definitely not be able to write that as a fraction the exact value rather so these two guys that I just um, looked at root 2 and pi are irrational so this answer is correct it includes all the options except pi and root 2 so here we have irrational so that's out 3000 only no some there are some others that are also rational and this one is out because include pi and root 2 as mentioned before which family of numbers begin with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3? Well, we just discussed that, right? That is definitely whole numbers. So this is the, the correct option. This one will not be the correct option. This one is the correct option. Whole numbers. Natural numbers start from, from 1. They are whole numbers, yes, but they start from 1. Um, we also call them counting numbers. So we can think about natural counting numbers. We naturally count from what? From 1. Okay, so now let's look at this one. 5 plus 3 times the bracket 2 to the third minus 4, close bracket all over. Um, the quantity 8 minus 6, all divided by 2. Okay, so let's see how we do this. First off, let's work with the numerator. 
we want to work brackets first, right? So let's put back every other person. <laughs> I'm calling the numbers person. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's write that neatly. Uh, let's work out in the bracket. It says 2 to the third power. 2 to the third simply means 2 times 2 times 2, which is going to give us 8. And of course, so this is 8 minus 4. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So I can replace the 2 cubed minus 4 with 4. So let's do that. I'm going to replace with 4. All right. Let's work the, the denominator. Once we see brackets, we work brackets before the other operations, yeah? Um, except when you have powers out the bracket, we work the powers first. But of course, we have to work within the brackets. Uh, you know, we have to work brackets first. Definitely, because even if we have something like this, um, 5 minus 1 cube, we can't apply the, well, we, we could apply the cube first, but that's knowing some formula. But so we need to just work the brackets first. And then we apply the cube to the answer. So the same way we are going to work within the bracket, uh, the pair of brackets. Um, so we're going to have 8 minus 6, which is 2. Then put back the division by 2. And of course, 2 divided by 2 is 1, right? So whatever the numerator is, that's going to be our answer. Now, this is a tricky part. Is the answer going to be um, 5 plus 3, which is 8, 4 is 32 over 1, which I see here, right? But that's not the answer. Because we have to do what first? Multiplication before addition. So let's multiply. So multiplying first, 3 times 4 is 12. So that's going to be 5 plus 12. And so this is going to be 17 over 1, which is 17. So this is the correct answer. Let's go down to the next one. Now we want to work brackets first, yeah? We did discuss that. So this is 7 times 10 uh, minus. Um, once you see power here, um, there's, no matter what we do first, it's not going to affect it. Because this number here, 3 squared, is just a number, which is just saying 9. So we can write it in the other form. So the operations would not affect the, parent, the, the, the power. Okay, divided by, I want to work out the brackets, which is going to be 3. Okay, so what do we do first here? Well, here's, the, here's an idea. Always do addition and subtraction last. And anything else in between, you, you can work them out simultaneously. So like the 7 times 10 and the 9 divided by 3, you can work those out simultaneously. So I mean to say you can work these guys out and these guys out separately. Even if you do the 9 divided by 3 first, you're still going to have to say 7 times 10. So it's going to be 70 minus, all right, so that's 70 minus. 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. And so it's going to be 67. So that's correct. Moving forward, what is a quarter percent of 800? Is it 220, 280? I see C here. Is it going to be 200? Let's see. A quarter. Percent means what? Percent means per 100 divided by 100. But remember, 100 is 100 over 1, right? And we can change division to multiplication, and we can reciprocate this as 100 over, 1 over 100. So they're basically the same thing. Dividing by 100 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. All right? Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal because we have reversed the, the operation so we can reverse the number. All right, so with that in mind, I'm going to write percent as what? Times 1 over 100. Okay, this means percent times 1 over 100. I just explained it here. Okay, so that's a quick way of doing it. So, if you want to do this within quick time, let's see how fast this is. Let's see how fast that is. We're going to say 1 over 4. We see percents. So we're going to say times 1 over 100. The off means times, and we have 800 here. And this is going to make it so easy because there's several ways we can do this. We can say, let's work out the first two numbers, um, as in 1 quarter times 100. Uh, so it's going to be um, 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 100 is 400, times 800, and 400 itself goes once into 800 goes twice. I mean, that's easy to see, right? So the answer is actually A. So this is our answer. Okay, so here we have another one um, dealing with um, percent in a fractional form. And it says a store offers a percent discount of 15 divided by 2. 
or should I say 15 halves percent on a product that costs $200. What is the discount price? All right, discounted price rather. All right, so the price after the discount has been applied. Um, let's see this. Something is telling me something is off, but let's look at this. So it's gonna be 15 over two times percent. Again, we're gonna put one over 100 times 200. And let's see what it's going to give us, okay? So again, we can do the same thing. 15 times 1 is 15. And 2 times 100 is 200. Okay, so that's 15 over 200 times 200. All right. And uh, let's see. So we're going to have here 200 into 200. That cancel. And so we're going to be left with just 15. So 15 is actually um, the discount. So this is going to be the discount of 15. And so if the discount is 15, the discounted price must be the difference, right? So if something costs $200, and you're taking off $15 from it. And so that's going to be $185. Now, I don't see that in the option. So you will have to gain a mark here. But this will definitely not be the answer. All right? If anything... This 15, I could have changed this question around to ask, what's the discount? All right, what was the discount? Okay, so 185 is the answer. But if I change the question around and ask, what is the discount? Or what is the discount um, given? Or what was the disc? Yeah, what is the discount, basically? Then it's going to be, we can use it as 15. Otherwise, the answer is not there. It should actually be 185 once we take off the discount of $15 from $200. Okay. Now, what is 5,600,000 written in scientific notation? What is 5,600,000 written in scientific notation? Okay. So first off, when you're doing scientific notation, you want to identify from the first non-zero digit to the last non-zero digit. The first non-zero digit, going from this way, by the way, is 5. What's the last non-zero digit? six so your answer the first part of your answer has to include um, the digits from the first to the last non-zero digit so the first non-zero digit we have is five and the last one we have is six and i'm going to put multiply by 10 to some power so something goes here and we have to put a point here okay so it's be 5.6 times 10 to a particular power now what power it is that's the question well, remember this is just 5.6. How would what would you what power of 10 would you multiply 5.6 by to get this huge number here, 5,600,000? It must be a positive power because you gotta shift this point to the right to get it back to be 5,600,000. Okay, so we are saying the point is right here now, and it has to pass six digits in order to get there. So it's going to be 5.6 times 10 to the 6. And so your answer is absolutely correct here. All right. So, I mean, I could go in detail about how you calculate that, but you have that correct. So that's great. How many significant figures are in the number? Well, the first significant figure in a number is the first digit. When we go from left to right, that is not 0. So as we go from left to right, the first digit that's not zero, that's the first significant. And so five is the first significant. Since these are not significant, these are, um, I mean, prior to the five, all those zeros before the first non-zero are just placeholders. And they're necessary there to keep the place value of the significant figure. And so the significant figure that we have there is a five. So we only have one. And that's correct. A is the correct answer. See, we only have one. So that's great. How many significant figures are in the number 500.6? Okay, so how many significant figures? Now, pre previously I mentioned that we have place values. Zeros mean place values, correct? But you see when zeros are between non-zero digits, they are, in fact, significant figures. So this is a significant figure because it's, not, it's not zero, so it has to be significant. This is not zero. So it has to be significant. As long as it's not zero, it's significant. And once we have zeros in between, 
they are significant. We call them in between zeros. So in between zeros are significant figures. All right? So you might be saying, so what kind of zeros are not significant? Leading zeros. So if we go back here, right, these zeros here that are they call placeholders, these are leading zeros. They appear before the first non-zero digit. So those are leading zeros, and they are what? Not significant figures. So leading zeros are not significant. Who are significant? The in-between zeros. And by the way, there's another type. Zeros at the end of a decimal are also significant. Zeros at end of a decimal are also, well, also significant. All right. So about my handwriting, this should be also ALSO. But let's look at this um, question. So if the in-between zeros are significant, then we have four significant figures. So D is correct. Let's see what you chose. Yes, that's correct. Let's go down to the next one. How many significant figures are in the number? Good. So we have a lot of zeros here and then 306. So the first significant figure is the first digit from left to right that's not zero, which is three. So that's our first significant. Our first sig fig. The first digit from left to right that we meet, that's not zero. So three is the first. This six is also significant because it's a non-zero digit, right? Non-zero digit, right? So it's significant. Now this is an in-between zero, and in-between zeros are significant. So we have three significant figures. So the answer is B, which you have, which is correct. How many significant figures are in the number? So we have some numbers here. Uh, well, we have a number, one number. Yeah, correction, one number. But we have numbers are made up of digits or a single digit number, like from um, zero to, to nine, for instance. Those are single digit numbers, right? But this number has one, two, three, four, five, six digits. Now, which ones are significant? Which digits are significant? Well, all we have one, two, three, four, five non-zero digits, so they are all significant. And since we already met a non-zero digit at the beginning, which is the first sig fig, right? It's the first digit from left to right that's not zero, so it's the first significant figure, that's one. And so after that, we can count two, three, four, five. So all, all these five digits are significant. Now, what about this zero here at the end? Well, remember I mentioned before, right? Zeros at the end of a decimal are significant. All right, we call them trailing zeros. So trailing zeros, they're trailing the number. They're at the end of the number. Well, at the end of a decimal, let me be correct. Let me be corrected, right? So trailing zeros, the, all right, at the end of a decimal, and that's important, right, where it comes. It comes at the end of a decimal, not a whole number, but at the decimal, at the decimal point. Once it comes after the decimal point and it's at the end, all those zeros at the end are significant. All right, so I want to keep that in mind. Trailing zeros at the end of a decimal. So, for instance, if I have this number here, Though these are trailing, they may or may not be significant. Most times not significant. They're just place values. But once we have decimals, now like something like this, 0 0.050200, now these zeros are significant because we have a decimal point here. And so these zeros at the end of a decimal are significant. Okay? Because it's at the end of a decimal, not a whole number. Okay, so we'll get that. So we have literally six significant figures, not five, as it would seem to be, because a zero appeared at the end of the decimal. So the answer is C. Okay, so let's go down. Um, 3,299 correct to two significant figures is, okay, so let's look at this. 
How many significant figures we have? We have four significant figures. All non-zero digits are significant. But we want two significant figures because we have four here. So that means we want the first two. We always start with the, from left to right. So the first is three. The second significant is two. So we want the three. We want the two. But we in these cases, we always round in, right? Once we say significant figures or decimal places, nearest tens, hundreds, thousands, we are rounding. So since we are round, we got to check the previous digit. That digit is a nine, right? This digit here is a nine. Cut in the category of five or nine, then we got to add one to the digit we're looking at, which is a two, which is in the second, which is at the second is significant figure position. So you can be three here. But is 33 a good representation of 33 of 3,299? I mean, you wouldn't exchange $33 for this $3,299, would you? No, they're, they're very far apart. But, so it means therefore we gotta add what we call placeholders, the zeros. Gotta change those nines into zeros, right? Because, I mean, if we add one zero, it's still far. 330 is not 3,299, not close. We add another zero. So we can maintain the place value, or place values of these significant figures. So this three remains a in the thousands position, right? Just as the original three at the beginning. So as long as we have that, we, we don't need to add any more zeros. Okay, now that's what I just said there is very useful. Because if you have decimal point, for example, like something like this, and we, were, and we were rounding this number here to two significant figures, we wouldn't change these last nines to zeros. We wouldn't do that, no. <laughs> because remember, these zeros would now be significant because they appear at the end of a decimal, right? Right, so that would have been six um, significant figures because these zeros are the end of a decimal. Once they are at the end, we don't put them. So we want to make sure we keep it at two significant figures. Okay, so, all right, so that's it there, right? Now let's go on now. And, and one thing I want to say as well too, we want to avoid putting a point here like that because putting a point here could mean something else. So avoid that. I mean, the number itself should have a point there naturally anyways, but just leave it as it is there. Okay, so 23.6987 to two significant figures. Well, we have all non-zero digits here, so they're all significant. So we got we want, since we want two, we got to start from left to right. It means that we're going to have to chop off these guys here. So we can have only two significant figures. So is it going to be 23? Is it going to be 23? Or should we add a one to the last digit there, the three to become four, to make it four? Well, we have to pay attention to this digit, the first of those we're chopping off. Since the first of those we're chopping off is in the category of five or more, we gotta add a one so it becomes 24. And so the answer is gonna be A. One way to check or see if our answer is correct or not is to look at the what they what is saying here. This is saying 23.7, remember, all non-zero digits are significant. So this actually has three sig fig. All right, it has three sig figs. How we know that? Because we have three non-zero digits. This has four sig fig. So we know that that definitely cannot be the answer. So these cannot be the answer. This has two sig fig, but it did, we did not round up. We round down. We kept the origin the three as it is. And that's, that's, not, that's not the correct thing because we got to pay attention to the very next digit after. Five or more, we got to add one. So the answer is going to be A. All right, so let's go down to this one. Reciprocal of 0 0.05. Well, it's weird that we said reciprocal because reciprocal mean what? If we have five, one over five, the reciprocal is what? All right, the reciprocal is simply just simply um, changing what? Changing the upturning, right? Reciprocating the, the number, five over one. So to, if we talk about reciprocal, we talk about reciprocating, right? The reverse of it. So we have five, and this five here is in the, in, in the hundredth place. So it'd be five hundredth, right? Five hundredth. Five hundredth, and so the reciprocal would mean a hundred over five to upturn it. 
And we can simplify this. 5 and 5 goes once, into 10 goes 2 times, into 0, 0. Or 5 into 100 goes 20 times. So this is correct. Which one of these fractions is the largest? Uh, for them to be the largest, we'll look at the, the ones that have the, the digits or the numbers in the numerator and denominator um, very close to each other. Like, just they're just after, one after the next. In other words, when we think of that, we're thinking of like 1 over 2. 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. Because as long as we have some space between the numbers, like 4 sevens, this is almost like half of, of um, 7, right? Because half of 7 is 3.5. So it's almost like 50%. But it's, it's just, it's, it, it, well, 3.5 is, is half, which is 50% of, of um, 7. So 4 7 would be a little bit more than 50%. A half, even though it's just a digit apart, um, that would still be 50%. 2 thirds is going to be a little bit more than 50%. Right? So let's see. 2 thirds is going to actually be, if you want to remember this, is 0 0.666. And the 6 repeating onwards forever. 4 fifths, um, that's going to be 0 0.8. Right? And so let's see how we can probably figure this out if you have to do it this way. This is three, this three goes into two. Can three go into two? No, it can't. I'm going to add a zero here. And three goes into to 20. Think of this as 20 now. Three goes into 20 six times because three sixes is 18, right? If you multiply the three by six, you get 18. And so you're going to have a remainder of two. Okay, right? 18 plus two is 20. Now three into two, again, we can't. But we're not, we already have a point here. We're not put no point anywhere else. We're not just simply add a zero when we can't onwards. Three goes into 26 times, which is 18 again. Three, six, 18, remain the two. Three into two, we can't put a zero again. So we're going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep getting six, six, six as we keep on going upwards, right? I'll keep on getting 20 going upwards. So eventually, in your calculator, notice that the last digit will be a seven because the calculator has to round off. Um, because it cannot hold all the sixes going on forever. So that's and f and four over five. Five into four we can't. So put a zero here. Five goes into eight. Five goes into forty. Sorry, eight times. So zero point eight. Let's try five six. Well, that wasn't given. Oh yes, it's given. All right, it's given. Um, six goes into five. Well, we can't put a zero here. Six goes into fifty. How many times? Well, we know that 6 times 6 eighths is 48, so that's very close to 50. So 6 goes into 50. Um, let me write that better. It's kind of difficult to see this here. All right, so 5 over 6. Can't put a point, put a 0. 6 goes into that. Um, all right, 6 eighths is 48. All right, and uh, we're going to read a 2. This goes into two. How many times? We can't put a zero. It goes three times. Six three is eighteen. And so we're gonna have two remainder. We're talking about twenty there. Six goes in twenty eight times. Remainder two. All right. Six three is eighteen. So remainder two. So we we'll put the two here. And then six and twenty goes um, three times again. And remainder two. Put a zero there. Six and twenty goes three times, and you're going to keep on getting that. So we see five, six is, is a little bit more than, in terms of a value, a little bit more than 0 0.8. Because if you want to compare 0 0.8 with 0 0.8333, because we have a digit, we have digits after the eight, right, other than zero, then this one is smaller. Because what digits are really after this eight here? You can think of it as being zeros, right? And if you compare the next digit after eight, three is greater than zero. So five, six is much larger than um, four fifths. But we don't have four fifths here to really compare. But we have four sevenths. This one, again, is gonna be a little bit more than um, 50, as mentioned before, like 3.5. Um, seven out of 12, that's just a little bit more than a half as well. So this is definitely the correct answer. All right, and you can do the others the same way like I was doing here and check those out. Other than that, you can memorize them. This one says, which of the following is incorrect? 
when we add in negative to negative, we're going to get more negatives. So remember to add and keep the sign. So we add 8 plus 4, 12, keep the sign. That's co actually correct. When we're looking for which one is what? Incorrect. Um, 8, 4 is 32. But negative times negative is positive. This is actually incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because negative times negative is positive. But in case you thinking you're thinking this one is correct this has a negative here it should be positive negative divided by negative looking at C negative divided by negative is actually positive which is and then 8 divided by 4 is 2 so this is actually correct we don't want the correct one we want the incorrect one and the next one negative 8 subtract negative 4 this becomes a plus subtract negative becomes positive and now we have what? We're adding two numbers with different signs. We're going to subtract, keep a sign of the number that has a greater amount in terms of its sign. We have great, we have more negatives than positives, so there's negative four. So this is actually also correct. And the only one that's incorrect is B. So this is the right one. This one is incorrect. So the answer is B here. Um, next one, which statement is actually correct? Think about a number line we have zero here then we go up or we go down which one as we go up here the numbers get larger all right and as we go down the number gets smaller so the more negative the smaller the value so we have more negatives here right so that means it's smaller the value so negative 7 which is a smaller negative than negative 11 so the smaller the, the larger the negative, the smaller its value. So definitely B is correct. Okay? Negative four is less than negative four is less than negative three. Alright? Why is it less than negative three? Because we negative four has more negative is more negative. Alright? Uh, is five less than three? Definitely not. That's out. Is four less than negative five? No, 4 is actually greater than negative 5. All positive numbers are greater than negative numbers. So this one is not true either. Just like this one is also not true. So the answer is actually B, which you have correct. Um, let's look at the next one. Negative 12 minus negative 5. This can be plus. So that's going to be equal to negative 12 plus 5. Different signs we subtract. And so we're going to get 7. We have more negatives, so the answer could be negative 7. The answer is actually C. Let's see what you have. That's correct. Okay, 5 subtract negative 2. Subtracting the negative becomes positive, and so 5 plus 2 is 7, and you have that correct. Awesome. Which expression demonstrate the associative property of multiplication? With associative law, what you don't do, you don't move the numbers. And typically, it's three numbers, right? but you do not move the numbers. You keep the numbers in their place. So like, we're gonna look at these, we're gonna examine these, and then we're gonna look at these numbers over here and see which numbers were shifted. If the numbers are shifted, then we're not talking about the associative property. Okay, let's see. Numbers remain the same position, numbers remain the same position, numbers got shifted in this one, Right, numbers got shifted. So once the numbers get shifted, it cannot be right. It's not associative, associative law. So this one is out. We don't shift the numbers. Let's get the next one, D. The numbers got shifted. So again, that one is out. Cannot be associative law. Numbers should not be shifted with the associative law. All that should happen is that the, the brackets shift with associative law. And it's basically saying the order in which you multiply two numbers doesn't matter um, in, in grouping, which number you group, right? So in the first, in, in, in look at, let's, look at, let's look at A. We have 3 times 5. In other words, we're multi so in other words, if I have 3 times 5 times 6, what it's saying there, whether I do this, um, whether I should work out the 3 times 5 first, I'll get the same answer as if I work out the 5 times 6 first, okay? 
And, and basically, what we're doing here, we're not shifting the numbers. We're just keeping them as they are, and that's it. So which one would be, work? Which one would be the, the solution? It will not be this, because obviously, I have the bracket around 3 times 5 here, so that's, that's out. So the only solution that makes sense would be B. Notice that I have 3 times 5 in bracket, and next is equal to, and then I have 5 times 6 in bracket, which would be the next pair. All right, so the answer should be B. So this, so this one um, would not be the correct answer. All right, we want to work out the five times six first. Okay, which expression demonstrate the associative property? Again, associative law. We do not remove. We do not shift the numbers. So if we look at these, identify the one that the ones that have been shifted. We can draw a line through them. Numbers shifted. 453, 453, okay, so all these, so numbers shifted, so we, we could take out that one. Um, associative property, we should see brackets around the numbers. There's no bracket in this one, right? No brackets, and so we're going to remove that guy as well. And C is the same thing. They're both in bracket, uh, 4 plus 5 in bracket repeated, so what's the, just the same operation basically we're working out the four plus five first that should not be so this one would be out the answer is going to be d we're either going to add the four plus five or we're going to add the five and the three either we add the four and five or we add the five and three the order doesn't matter remember we don't shift the numbers around we just shift the bracket that's all so the answer is d that should be the answer. All right, next one. Which are the following expression demonstrate the commutative, commutative property? So commutative properties is when now we're going to shift the numbers around, right? And typically this would involve um, two or three numbers, but we don't use brackets um, to show the, the, commutative, the commutative bracket, the commutative property. So commutative property, we don't use the brackets. That's usually associative law. So this, this here is the associative law. Of addition All right so this one is out 3 times 5 equals 15 okay that's just finding the solution we don't want that 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals that's not saying much to us in terms of associated property you just want to want to see what on the left will be what's on the right in terms of what's showing that we are shifting how we are not shifting yeah we are we are basically shifting how we are adding or multiplying but it says addition so 3 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 3. That's commutative. The order doesn't matter. How we shift the numbers. So that's correct. Which equation shows a commutative property of multiplication? Commutative again, we shift the numbers, not the brackets. So this one is out. Oh, just looking at it quickly. We have brackets here. Definitely not. Um, we have 4 plus 7. This one here, we have 4 plus 7 equals 7 plus 4. This is this is definitely commutative. Commutative, sorry. Commutative or commutative, whatever you want to call it. It's definitely commutative. But why is commutative or commutative? It's addition. What are we looking for? Multiplication. So A has to be the answer, which you have correct. Excellent. Distributive property, basically, this is a concept. If you have a quantity inside, adding or subtracting that quantity, you multiply the quantity outside onto each quantity inside a bracket, whether it's plus or minus. So A will multiply B, and then A again will multiply C with a plus and minus in the middle. So let's see which one we have here. Now, this is a commutative law of addition. Um, this is going to be... This one here is um, definitely the, asso the associative law of multiplication. This one here is the associative law of addition. And this here is a distributive law. So the answer is B. All right? It's going to be 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. 
distributing the three outside onto each number. So we're gonna remember that, right? So this definitely will be out. Okay, so as it should be. be. Now simplify using the distributive property. Again, this is gonna be five times two plus five times three. This is definitely out, this is definitely out, this is definitely out. It's five times two plus five times three. C is the answer. And you have that correct. So in the previous one, you sh you probably made a, an error in selection because you definitely understand that concept. So three X plus two Y, we're gonna substitute. So it's three times the X value plus two times the Y value. X value, what's the Y value? The X value is four, the Y value is five. So we're substituting and then simplifying our answer. And it's going to give us 12 plus 10, 22. So our answer is going to be C. Let's see what you have. That's correct. Let's go down to the next one. Okay, so we have powers here. So we're going to be 2 times the quantity E to the second power. So what's, what's the quantity E? Which is 3 minus 3 times the quantity B. And what is B? B is 2. So it'd be two times, and what's this quantity, the three, three times, well, three to the second power is nine. So that's two times nine minus three to six, which is 18 minus six, which is 12. So the answer is D. Let's see which one you have here. Awesome. Now this one is gonna be three times the quantity of Z, the, three times the quantity Z, which is three times six minus 2 over 4, 3, 6 is 18, minus 2 over 4, 18 minus 2 is actually 16 over 4, which is actually equal to 4. So our answer should be C. Let's see what you have. That's correct. Awesome. This one is 2 times the quantity x squared plus y as a quantity being squared. Now let's see what x is. x is negative 2 y is actually 3. Let's write that out. So we're going to work out the powers first. Now, it's x is actually 2, right? So this is actually 2 here. When you're raising a quantity to a power, you're multiplying a quantity by itself that number of times. Or we should see that as a factor that number of times. So we should see negative 2 as a factor twice. So it's negative 2 times negative 2. Now, negative times negative will give you a positive. And 2 twos is 4. So that's actually 4 plus and 3 squared it means 3 times 3 so two factors of 3 multiplying 3 times 3 in a similar way that will give us 9 just as this gave us 4 this will be 8 plus 9 which would be 17 so the answer is going to be a and you seem to have that correct which is correct which is true all right so that's awesome okay now here some um Translation from word phrase to algebraic expression. Which expression results represents the cube of the difference between a number x and 2? Okay, so the cube of the difference. The cube of the difference. So we want a difference, right? So once we get the difference, we're going to cube the difference. So we're going to have the difference in bracket. I'm going to cube it. But the difference of what? Between what? x and 2. And so which option is it? B is correct. And so you seem to have, yes, you do have that correct. Very good. Next one. The product of a number Y and the cube of an un another number Z. So the product, so the product here means we're going to have, the product is telling us, you know, the result, you know, we're going to have, we're going to multiply two things. One quantity there and another quantity there. So this is what we call the product. The product of what two things? Well, a number y, so let's put that number here, and the cube of a number, another number z. So the cube of z will go there. So it's gonna be, if you look at this, let's simplify that, All right? So we can take these out then, since all we're doing is multiplying those guys there. So y times z cube is just simply y z cube. Which one is it? It's going to be A, which you have correct. Awesome. 
All right, so the quotient of twice a number x and 4. So we're talking about a quotient, right? Which is a result from what? Division. So, so we can use the divisor or the division bar. I shouldn't say divisor, but the division bar here. And we want to put a quantity on top. So let's see. The first thing they're talking about here is twice a number x. And then they use the word and as a separator. So that goes as the denominator. So this is going to be the numerator. This is going to be the denominator. So twice the number x is 2x. And the denominator is 4. Okay, so once it's a quotient, we're talking about the result from division. Right? So that's our division bar. First information before the and is 2x twice the number x. That goes on top. And the next information after the and goes below to show that we are dividing two things. So this could be written like this as well. So which option is correct? 2x divided by 4. That's B. And you have that correct. Excellent. Okay, so we seem to have quite a few of these. Let's see if we can get all of them correct. The sum of a square of a number. So the sum. So I want to have that, right? Sum of two things, right? Let's see. The sum of what? The square of a number x. So in over here, we're going to have the square of a number x twice the number, twice the cube of another number, twice the cube of another number, right? Twice the cube. So that means we're going to have the cube and we're going to twice it, meaning multiply by two. So, and that number is y, right? Twice the cube of another number. So here we have the cube of a number, y. And twice that value, I'm going to put the 2 in front here. So 2 times the cube of y, in other words. So the answer is going to be x squared plus 2y cubed. Let's see, x squared, this is x cubed, this is x cubed. 2y cubed, this is 3y squared, so this is out. So the answer is going to be d. Let's see what you have. Absolutely amazing. Great job. Okay, let's see now. Um, select the correct number of sides based on the polygon given on the left. Hexagon. All right, I see an X here, so I think of the number 6, which has an X as well. So we have 6 sides. That's correct. Um, octagon. Right? We talk about 8 sides. All right, so that's correct. Penta. Pentagon. The gun means sides, right? Penta, we're talking about 5. This is correct. Quadrilateral, we're looking at 4. That's correct as well. Decagon, we're looking at 10. That's correct, all right? So if we go back up, we can see we have 10 there. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, so this is 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay, so, um, heptagon. That's going to be after hexagon six, or heptagon, which is seven. And so that was good. that's correct. Nonagon, that's going to be nine. That's correct. It's absolutely great. Great job. All right. So please check over those that were not correct. And um, just review those and ensure that you can master them.